Well, the Velvet Owl will now hang in perpetuity in the production truck, and we get ready for the main event, the WBO <laughs> Middleweight Championship. Al knew nothing about that, I have oh, to tell God. you. And we have been talking about this thing for weeks <laughs> upon weeks. And while the crowd here munches on cake, which we didn't get any of, we'll tell you about what's upcoming. And what is upcoming is the battle for the middleweight title between Doug DeWitt and Robbie Sims. Sims, of course, the brother of Marvin Hagler, but now he wants his own spotlight. Robbie Simpson failed to win a world title, but ironically, he's beaten the last two WBC middleweight champs. As rising stars, he and Iran Barkley produced a classic battle. Both men went toe-to-toe -to -toe until the sixth round, when Robbie simply outlasted Iran and knocked him out for a big win. Two years later, the aging legend Roberto Duran felt Robbie sting. Robbie withstood a Duran rally in the middle rounds to finish strong. This in-and-out performance typifies the 28-year-old's career. Some great moments and some bad ones. But he came away with the win. Something he'll need to do tonight to stay in the limelight in the middleweight division. So Robbie Sims will do what he can to keep a career going and hopefully a title shot against Doug DeWitt. DeWitt himself has been a guy that's been on again, off again, but really he's had a few problems in his last 12 fights. He has only won five of them. Tonight is the last hurrah. If his opponent Robbie Sims is an enigma, then Doug DeWitt is an enigma with a capital E. Which DeWitt will show up? That's the question. Will it be the one who has looked so good against people like Alberto Gonzalez? DeWitt's arsenal is full when he puts his punches together, and he has power, enough to get 17 KOs and 30 wins. Or will we see the Doug DeWitt who's failed in big fights, like in this loss to Sambu Kalambe? He said he felt confident going in, but his plans fell apart early. Kalambe outboxed him and then added insult to injury. He knocked DeWitt out. The once invincible DeWitt Chin is now suspect. He hopes it won't give way tonight against Robbie Sims. Well, let's talk about the keys to victory in this one, Al. Well, for Doug DeWitt, uh, I think the key is very much what he did for part of the fight in his first fight with Robbie Sims. Push Sims back, throw that left hook to the body and the head, really let it go. He's got power in it. For Robbie Sims, use his jab, and I mean a real lot. A Just real keep, lot. A real, real lot. Just keep using it. That's something to build a house on. <laughs> a real lot, yes. And keep moving and punching. Uh, the, the key is to just give DeWitt a lot of movement. Let's talk about the rules, the WBO rules etched into marble. The key difference here is that there is no standing eight count in the WBO. The rest are the same as the New Jersey rules we reviewed earlier that can't be saved by the bell, including last round, the physician stopping the fight. And, of course, the 10-point must, three judges, and the three knockdown row, which was a key point. And the old game of you go in the ring first, no, I go in the ring first, no, the other guy goes in the ring first is being observed right at the moment. As neither fighter, neither Robbie Sims nor Doug DeWitt, has made his way into the ring. And that, of course, is an old psychological ploy. Well, and the interesting thing about this is the fact that uh, this is for a WBO title, and which is vacant, of course, which you aptly pointed out has been vacant for 45 years. <laughs> but uh, neither man is a champ, so they're both doing a psych job on each other. And, of course, these are guys who know each other. They've fought once before. They've been around each other. There's Robbie Sims. I guess he and the Petronellis decided we might as well get this thing going, so we'll come out first. Interesting to point out that both these men come into this fight off a loss to Sambu Kalambek. Yeah, a man who uh, is a master boxer, so that loss in 12 by Robbie Sims isn't that weird. But what was weird, as you look at the new hairdo, by the way, a much closer crop to his head than we've ever seen with Robbie Sims, what it was weird was that Doug DeWitt got knocked out by Sambu Kalambe, DeWitt known as a man with a good chin. You hear this a lot about fighters, but Robbie Sims, when we spoke to him this morning, had an idea, was really sincere about it. He feels that since he's gotten married, his life has changed, and thereby his boxing career has changed as he shakes hands with his brother, Marvin Hagler. And he feels he has settled down a lot, uh, as you said. He's, he said, candidly, he said, I partied too much during my boxing career, and it's probably taken years off that career. And uh, tonight, a battle of two guys, really, who have lacked the dedication in the sport of boxing to match their talent. 
These are two middleweights who are very, very talented fighters and once would have been thought of for sure as future champions. And he's another guy, of course, as we look at Doug DeWitt make his way toward the ring. Robbie Sims fought in the shadow of Marvin Hagler, much as Michael Spinks fought for a while in the shadow of Leon Spinks. Now it's his moment in the sun. And it's this man's also, and he comes in cleverly disguised as a leopard. <laughs> Doug has always found an interesting robe. Doug is a man who has never reached his potential. He's shown flashes of it in the past. He had the one title shot against Colin Bay. It ended badly for him. And even at 27 years of age, as we said, this is his big shot. He's got the talent. Has he trained properly this, for this fight? And will he be able to keep himself modally, uh, mentally focused on Sims in this fight and what he wants to do? Even he feels he should be fighting at a higher weight, but he has come to middleweight for tonight. And he had to steam off a little bit of weight to get to 160. And that's often been the case with DeWitt. Will it make him weak? It, he was weak in the end, toward the end of his last fight with Sims. It is a real scare card. Let's get to Michael Buffer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with the approval of the New Jersey State Athletic Control B Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., this bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization Supervisor Ringside, Nick Cariasiotis. The three judges are John Stewart, Lynn Carter, and Eva Shane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the boardwalks, Big Easy, the showboat, hotel and casino here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds for the WBO. Middleweight Championship of the World. The referee for this bout is Joe Cortez. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the royal blue trunks and weighs an even 159 pounds. From Brockton, Massachusetts, his professional record. 29 victories against only five defeats and two draws. 21 of those 29 victories by... Ladies and gentlemen, rockin' Robbie Sims! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the black trunks with white trim, he weighs an even 160 pounds. He's from Yonkers, New York. His professional record, 30 victories against six defeats and four balls, 18 by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Cobra DeWitt! All right, gentlemen, we went over the rules of the room. Remember what I said, keep me a clean fight and protect yourselves at all times. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. Well, just an observation, as you look at Robbie Sims, Sims, of course, both these men for that matter, and as we've touched upon on a couple of occasions already, in a pivotal situation. Doug DeWitt, and this is just an observation, has come in stone cold. He does not, he's not sweating at all. He's not, he doesn't look like he's really warmed up as well as he might be. Although Sims is not a guy who is really gonna go after you early in the fight. At least that's not been his history. The only time he did do that was against John Collins in a big fight, got him out early. That was one of the cases where he did. That was a, considered a surprise though, as you say. Well, there isn't any more motivation needed in this fight than the simple fact that a career will go upwards or downwards as a result of it. Question mark being asked, or the question being asked, I should say, about Doug DeWitt is, does he still have the punching power? And what about that rock-hard DeWitt chin, which once was, so he took punches from Tommy Hearns, from the best, Don Lee, who was a big puncher at that time in the middleweight division, never wavered. We saw him get knocked out by Jose Quinones in a shocker, but then that knockout by Colin Bay was even more of a surprise. Scar tissue under the left eye of Doug DeWitt. Good hooks by DeWitt, and that's exactly what he needs to do. And he might have rocked Sims with those short hooks. He did. And a right hand, Sims kind of with a right hand of his own. The key to this fight, I said it in the last fight when I broadcast it, and I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it, because it's the key. Doug DeWitt has got to take a step to his left and crank up that left hook. It is that simple. Throw it to the body and throw it to the head. If he does it, he can win. If he doesn't do it, he's going to have to really get lucky with the right hand to win. And the proof was in this first round when he threw that double left hook and it hurt Sims. He's got Robbie Sims rocked, just as he did in the early part of their first fight, Barry. 
Okay, he lost the fight in the last three or four rounds. He feels in his mind that he won the fight. He felt it was close, but he did feel that he gave the fight away in the final two rounds. No, I don't believe he won it because I think he did give it away. But this early part of this fight is, in a way, a kind of a replay of that. We're now seeing boxing more, which is what he wants to do. Actually, with the right left hand, it was the best of that series. There it is. What a good left by Sims in response. So left and a counter left. And again, the same story, only that was a right hand by Sims. I felt going into this fight that whatever would happen, there would be a lot of punches landed, and that has happened already in this first round. And there is a little reddening. We talked about the scar tissue under the left eye of Doug DeWitt, and it's already a little bit red. So we come to the end of the first round, and it was a first round that was a little bit more than a feeling out process.